Hello everyone. Welcome back to the Eyes of Aura. We are now on the last major section of the game, so we're getting close to the end. Let's see what we need to collect. Two toys, 30 coins, two blue balls, of course, seven photos, and we already have the one painting from uh, chapter one, or section one. Well, let's take a look around. We have a door here, but it requires some sort of a code, and the server is offline, so we can't go in there yet. And already, here is the door to get into the next area, but we need one of those triangle thingies. This statue is holding one of our yellow balls, but we can't reach it yet. And there's a letter code down here that we don't yet know the answer to. And it looks like this will turn into a spiral staircase, but we're missing a hexagon-shaped thing that goes in here in the middle. And it looks like there's some stairs that go up as well, but we can't reach it just yet. And there's a spot for two levers next to the pole. So, what can we get in this room? Well, over here to the right on this table, there's a bowl and there's two coins in there. And over here, near the door we came from, behind this red pot, is one of those uh, Zodiac puzzles. This one is Virgo. So put it together. And we get a photo. One of seven. Alright, so what's the main point of this room? Well, you see these two things here on the left and right. And you see there's wires leading into each one. And the wire comes from this button here. And if you follow the wire down you see it enters sort of a maze of junctions that can turn either left or right, and what we have to do is lead the junctions one at a time to the thing on the left, hit the button, and then the thing on the right, hit the button, or vice versa. It doesn't matter which one you start with. It kind of reminds me of Channel Wood if you've ever played Myst. So let's start with uh, directing the power to this device on the left here. So we're starting from here. Let's follow my mouse. Da, 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 da. We come to this first junction, and it's already pointing to the left where we need to go. And then this junction, we got to turn to the left. And da, 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 da. And obviously, if we go to the left, it'll lead way over here, which doesn't do us any good. So let's move it to the right. And then it goes right in. So now let's hit the power button. And we have that set up. Looks like we need to put in a zodiac symbol. But we don't know which one just yet. But first, let's get this guy powered up over there. So starting back at the button. Uh, turn this to the right. And turn this to the right. Because to the left is a dead end over here. And that should already do it for that one. Let's push the button. <laughs> Thank you. 
Yep, and again we need another zodiac symbol here. So how do we know which zodiac symbols? Well, if you look behind you on the wall and look up, you see there's a zodiac symbol here, which is Libra. And there's one here, which is Capricorn. So Libra is closer to this guy. So that one will be Libra, and Capricorn is closer to this guy. So that'll be Capricorn. So let's put them in. Get one lever. And Libra. Or the other lever. And put them in and pull them. And with that, we've unlocked the staircase that goes up. Alright, so let's go up. And here is the last stone carving, and you guys have probably noticed by now that these stone carvings are actually the Zodiac, four of the Zodiac constellations. So in the intro chapter, we had Virgo. In chapter one, we had Sagittarius constellation. Chapter two, we had Libra. And in this chapter, right in front of us, this is Cancer. So, again, write down that this is for Chapter 3 and make a rough drawing of this. And in this little box down here, we get one single coin. And now there's a bunch of other things that we can't really deal with yet there's this wheel here that's locked in place by these two things there's this star poster that's important these dials are important this box is important we do not have the key yet And over here, there's a clue. I'll pick that up. We don't really know what that's trying to tell us yet, but we will later. But for now, let's just go through the door here. So in this room, there's a photo hidden up here in this box and on the whiteboard there are two coins pretty well hidden there's a journal here and as far as all this other stuff we can't deal with it yet because the server is offline like we saw downstairs on the uh, the keypad on the door. And over here we can't go through the gate yet because again the server is offline. So let's go through this door because it's the only way we can go. In this hallway, look toward the statues and look up at the shield close to the door that we just came from. There's a photo. You'll notice that um, each of these four statues has a date of birth, a date of death, and this dial here with six positions. And an on-off dial here. And this thing encased in glass. We cannot solve this puzzle yet. 
Uh, we can look at these two books. Here we have two constellations, Orion, which we already dealt with in Chapter 1, and Draco the Dragon. You're going to want to remember this one. And this other book shows Auriga and Leo. And in this box, we have a key. We know where that key goes, but we'll come back to it later. And click on this piece of paper, and we see another hint. It fits with the one we got before. But we'll deal with that when we get back into that room. For now, just go through the door on the other end of the hall. And remember in chapter one where we went through the green door and then when we went back through it the other way, we were at a different camera angle and we were able to pick up a photo on the ground near the grand stairs and we were also able to zoom in on a table that we couldn't see before and we grabbed a couple posters. Well, it's the same thing here. Go back right through the door that you just went into. And you can see now we're standing on the other end of the hall so we can see different things. And only from this angle can you see these coins here. So pick them up. Then you can just go right back through the door. Now remember in chapter 1 I told you whenever you're in this uh, stone narrow spiral staircase place there's usually a loose stone in the wall and this is no exception if we look up here from where we came from here is the loose stone just click it and we get another photo now let's go down first before we go up down here on the floor to your right are two more coins Over here, there's a trap door, which is one way. We'll have to come up from the other end. There's a second one of these wheels that we can't do anything with yet because it's locked. But there is a generator we can turn on with this button. And we need to turn it on right now. Go up the stairs. Go up again. Now, in this room, in the upper right, on this little stone ledge up here, there's another photo. And now that we turned on the generator downstairs, you see that it's connected by the big yellow wire to the projector. So now we can turn the projector on. And if we push this other button, we can switch the constellation that shows up. And when we set the right combination, you see these outward uh, black wires. You should recognize these. They were uh, going into the computer that said server offline. And when we get the right constellation and line up all the stars... These black boxes are going to flash green. But how do we know which constellation out of all these that we can select from the projector is the right one? Well, over here on the windowsill is a book. And if you open it and you read it, um, both of these pages talk about how Jane and George are on an adventure and they come across a dragon that is frozen but surrounded by fire and they keep talking about the dragon. And if you'll remember, we just looked at two posters that showed us four constellations and one of them was a dragon called Draco. So that's the one you need to set. And 
as it just so happens, I think I actually landed on the right one. So now all we have to do... Each of these columns has four squares. You can move it up and down. And you just have to line it up so that the lighted constellation lines up evenly with uh, these the carved-in version of the constellation. So that no part of the lighted version is left untouched. So here's the correct orientation on this one. You see the black line goes all the way through here. Uh, let's see... This one looks correct. The black line is touching every part of the white line. And let's do the same thing on the other side. This one is pretty obviously already set. And this one... Yeah, that looks correct to me. So let's look down and see if we're right. And we are, because these are flashing green. So that has power going out now to the computer. So let's go back and check that out. Just follow the black line. Goes into the computer. And well, it's great and everything that we have power going into the computer. But the server itself is still offline. So we'll have to fix that. We do have this key. So let's go into the previous room and use that. Over here. And we have a button. This is just the activation button for when we get this code right. And we've seen a couple of clues for this puzzle. Let's bring them up. We'll start with this one that we found second. So the top part of the image shows us that the increments go by twos and that it starts at zero. So zero, two, four, six. And then we have this bottom part of the picture which basically shows us an equation where we can deduce that the darkened stars, the filled-in stars, count as positive numbers, whereas the empty stars are negative numbers. So if you're taking away 3 from 5, you get 2. That's how you know that. Now this should look familiar to you. Check out these positions. We have like a 6 o'clock position, a 12 o'clock. And then we have these two like in a rectangle. These four, I mean, in a rectangle shape. Looks kind of familiar. It looks like this. 6 o'clock, 12 o'clock, and rectangle points. So... Wherever these lines are touching dots, that means those positions count, and the empty ones where there's no line do not count. And so, that basically, for each of these three pictures, one, two, three, we basically have an equation. So, for example, this top one here touches the bottom... Then it touches this one in the upper left, upper right, and bottom left. So, if we add all those up, down here we have seven filled-in stars. So that's seven. This one is three empty stars, so now we're down to four. Uh, here's 5, so that's 9, and then 1, so that's 10. So the answer for that top one is 10. 
and that corresponds to this guy on the left. It goes from left to right, top to bottom. So, 10 is 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. It's this line up here. Okay, that's good. Now the next one, we have the bottom one, upper left, upper right, and bottom right. It doesn't matter which order you go in. It's just addition, subtraction, so it doesn't matter. So 7, 4... Uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three. So three is the answer for the middle one. So that would be in between this line and this line down here. And obviously this button increases the bar. This button decreases it. Uh, that looks pretty good to me. The last one is 6 o'clock, 12 o'clock, and the bottom two. So 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. So 6 is the answer. So, 0, 2, 4, 6 is up here. Okay, that looks good to me. Let's see if we got it right. And we did. Now we can grab this hexagon shape thing, and we should already know where that goes. It goes down in the first room where we were so let's put it in there now we can go down to a lower level down here look at the table right in front of you and pick up the handle part of a lever and open up this drawer and grab this piece of paper. If you look on the ground over here, you see there's a photograph encased in glass. And this stone you can't move, and it's pointing down at the photograph. But these ones on the ceiling, you can rotate. And there are a bunch of them. And there's this one on the wall that you can't move, and it's pointing up. But there is this one on the floor adjacent to it, and you can rotate it. And there are no other ones around this one on the floor. So what you have to do is... This, this tile on the floor here is the starting point. And you have to point it towards this one on the wall. And then this one on the wall points at this guy. And then you have to point this guy in any of the four directions where there's another tile that you haven't dealt with yet. So I'm guessing, yep, this way right here. You have to point this guy towards this guy. And then this guy towards this guy, because it's adjacent, and so on and so forth until you reach all the way down to the photograph. And that's how you solve that, and it should open. So, let's get started here. There we go, pointing at the wall. Up to this guy, and we know the other one is in this direction. There we go. Follow it along. This is to the right, okay, and this guy will point to this guy, 
dealing with cardinal directions here. All right, and this guy obviously goes right to this guy. So, move it. This reminds me of the signpost uh, puzzle in Link's Awakening, if any of you have ever played that. Uh, let's see, this guy goes here. And this guy... I'm guessing this way, yes. To the left. Okay. And this guy down. And this guy to the right. And this guy up. And this guy to the left. And... This guy back over this way. And this guy over here. And this guy to the left over here pointing to this one. And this guy probably up this way. Yeah. And then this guy down at this one on the column here. And that should open the picture, hopefully. It sure does. All right, now we can continue onwards. Now down here, we can already get our last photograph if you look towards this circle thing. Which, <laughs> this is really something. And if you look up, there's a loose stone in the ceiling. So push, drag it uh, forward, and get the last photo. And I just got the achievement captured moments because I now have every photo in the game. Uh, our main goal down here is to look for a bunch of levers and a part of a lever, the other part, so that we can put three levers in here. So here's one. Uh, here's that other part to one. Let's combine them. And the third one... is here. Alright, let's put those in. Before we deal with that, there's a couple things we can do. This is a secret passage behind this wall, and to open it, look up, and look to the left and right, right here, and right here, and just pull each of those down, one at a time. They will lock into place. And we have uncovered where we're going to put our three yellow balls. Now, when that stone wall slid down, that looked pretty familiar, didn't it? If you remember back in Chapter 1, we opened up another wall like that, and it happens to be right down here. Right over here. Remember, we opened this from up here. We got the painting. Well, now we can finally reap the rewards. There are 10 coins in here, so make sure you count all 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And after that, after your 10th coin, you'll get the achievement consequences, schmonsequences, for getting the treasure. <laughs>
All right. Now. For this code. It's written on the barrel here. So you see two dots, one dot, three, one, three, one. And sometimes it's written below the horizontal line, and sometimes it's written above the horizontal line. Well, the position above and below the horizontal line basically just signifies if the lever's going to be down or up. But you don't really need to worry about that. As long as you pull the levers in order, it goes from left to right. This is lever 1, this is lever 2, this is lever 3. As long as you go in order from left to right, only worrying about the number lever you're pulling, 2, 1, 3, 1, 3, 1, you don't really have to worry about the position of it. Um, it'll always... It'll always just be in the correct position, so... So jot down that code, and... Let's pull the levers in that order. We have two... One... Three... One... Three... And one. And that'll open the box. And we get a floppy disk. I like how down here it says server boot, but when you zoom on it, zoom in on it, it says boot disk. That's pretty funny. All right, I think we're good for down here now. Let's go back up. Now notice these three symbols on these computers here. We have this one, this one, and this one. Jot those down. Those are actually uh, planetary symbols for our solar system. We have uh, Jupiter over here, Earth over here, and Neptune. Okay. Uh, this computer says insert boot disk. See that? So down here on the tower... Put in the boot disk that we just got. And you can take a look at the boot log if you want. You don't have to. It just shows you the date and time. I mean the date and the duration of time that the server was booted up. Let's try to initialize the server. Not going to work. The three terminals that we just looked at behind us are all offline. We have to get them all online. We see down here that the printer has a job waiting, so we might as well print whatever that is. It's a sheet of paper, and... Uh, the shape of that paper looks kind of like the other one we have, so let's combine them together. And you see, now we can superimpose this one over the other one. So how do we solve this puzzle? Well, let's look at it one at a time. We have Jupiter over here. If you get this paper out of the way... You see over here we have some symbols, and this one is the same symbol, Jupiter. So if you take... You see this box looks bigger than the other boxes. It looks different. So if you highlight the Jupiter symbol with the big box, uh, in the other boxes you see you get a number code. So this one is 81768 for Jupiter. So let's put that in. Eight, one, seven, six, eight. Enter. Access granted. And then it reboots. That means you did it correctly. Over here we have Earth. 
So find it. It's right here. And our code this time is 39783. 3, 9, 7, 8, 3. Enter. Okay. And over here we have Neptune. Now we don't see Neptune over here, but right over here, adjacent to Jupiter... We see that the page is not only torn, but if you look real close over here where my mouse is, you see that there was something written there. You see a little bit of ink. And that happens to be where Neptune was. So just put the box over where Neptune should be. And you get a code. 24195. 24195. One, nine, five, enter. All right, we have all three computers set now. So we can go back to the main terminal. And now initialize the server. And we did it. Server is online. And if you look at the boot log again, you'll see that it's currently running. And this game, I guess, takes place on October 1st, 2017. <laughs> but if you look at this computer closely, since we booted the server, you'll notice this little icon in the uh, bottom right corner. And to get to there with your cursor hit down and hit to the right and you see we highlighted it with a square and hit enter and hit up so that the dot goes into the circle and hit enter and we hear something open from back downstairs where we came from let's check that out aha see this now has an image on it, and we have to line it up. But the rings... Each ring moves another ring. Which makes it tricky. So... I can't take credit for figuring out the easy way to do this puzzle, or the way that you're supposed to. Um, I have to give credit to Anti-Muffin from Steam, um, and although I hate that name, Anti-Muffin, because I love to eat muffins, uh, I am very thankful for this person coming up with the solution. So, let me try to explain it to you the best that I know how. And by the way, the developer in a later patch added these diamonds. You see on the stone there's diamonds on the left and right side. And a couple of the rings have diamonds on them too that will line up. And you'll have, at the end, you should have diamonds that go all the way across horizontally, like as an equator type thing. Okay, so what the logic behind this is you're supposed to write down on paper, name each ring. Um, Anti Muffin, he names them from outer to inner. He goes A, B, C. D, and you don't have to name this guy because you can't, it doesn't ever move, the innermost one. So A, B, C, D, and you're supposed to jot down on paper, like, hey, if I move A, it moves C and D, and so on and so forth. And what you will learn when you jot this down is that... Ring A moves ring C and D, but importantly, it moves ring C. And ring C also moves ring A. So they have a relationship with each other. Once you get those two aligned, they are 
they are difficult to misalign unless you move ring B, which moves C and not A. So, that's one important piece of information. The other important piece of information is that ring A is the only ring that moves two other rings instead of one other ring, and it moves ring C and D. So, what you want to do is first you want to align A and C together because like I said, uh, once you get A and C together lined up with each other, they're going to be hard to misalign. And to do that, we're going to use ring B, because B moves C, but not A. So, you see that on ring C, just tr try to line up the face as best you can with the top of the head. And also, you'll have um, this diamond. It has a diamond here, too, but this diamond should align with this diamond on A. So, use ring B in the middle here. Line up C. Oh, I'm sorry. I This face was on ring B. I meant line the chest up with the top of the head. Excuse me. So use ring B and get the chest and head lined up as best as you can. Chest with head. But really, the more the more uh, precise way to do it is to line this diamond up with this diamond, which it almost is. Let's just get it exact. Okay, that's pretty close. So this diamond on C is lined up with this diamond on A, and we don't have it backwards because the chest obviously is going to line up with the top of the head. Uh, this dude's face belongs here in the middle. So that's step one. We have A and C together. Now the next step is that since we have A and C together and we don't ever want to mess that up, and the only ring that can mess that up is ring B, we want to put ring B in its final resting place so that we don't ever have to worry about it. But we don't want to move ring B because that'll move C. We want to move the ring that moves ring B which is ring D, the innermost one that you can move. So get that in its final position with ring D, which should be right about here. I try to line the nose up with this line and with the diamonds. Uh, that looks pretty close to me. I'll leave it right there. Alright, now... What we want to do... Is not worry about ring B anymore. It's already in its final position. But we want rings A, C, and D... Um, to be together. And in order to do that... And not move ring B... We want to move ring C... Because ring C moves A and C together, obviously. And all we got to do is line it up the best we can with ring D. So, it's pretty easy. Um, this Here's his chest on ring C. And here is the lower part of his chest. So, that's what I try to focus on lining up. And that looks pretty good. Uh, you see the line here that connects the two. Those look like they're in line, plus these two diamonds are lined up. So that looks pretty good to me. And now, remember that important piece of information that ring A moves, moves C and D and A because you're moving A. And A, C, and D are already lined up, but they're just in the wrong position. So all we got to do is we'll move ring A, which will move C and D. And they should all three of them line up with ring B here. 
So let's do that with ring A and get them all lined up in the upper left corner. And you see the diamonds are all lining up in the middle, like the equator. Oof, that's pretty close. But... There we go, just, just fiddle with it a little bit. Just fiddle with it a little bit to get these diamonds across. It could be a little tricky, but it's it's actually usually easier than that. When you're not talking and doing it, you'll you'll have a, a pretty easy time. Anyway, we opened this. Let's go in, and you'll get an achievement prost for finding the uh, brewery down here. In this big barrel here, we have three coins. We can open this gate by looking to the left of it. And here's a chain that we can pull down. Now let's see where that goes real quick. Ah, here we go. See, we were here before. We turned on this generator. We saw this wheel that we couldn't move. And we saw the trap door. Now we can go up and down that trap door. So that's just a shortcut. Now on the ceiling, you'll see these four tiles. One, two, three, four. This is a zodiac puzzle, but the four squares, instead of being together in the middle... They have been split apart, so you kind of just have to imagine that they are in the middle and put them together like that. Um, you should be able to deduce by looking at the four pieces that this is Taurus. And if you look at a picture of the Taurus symbol, um, it's pretty simple. Uh, these two circles on the bottom are going to line up with each other. These two circles here. Just pretend that they form a big circle. One on the left, one on the right, kinda. And... Then you see there's a little part of the circle here and a little part of the circle here which will line up with these two bottom circles. And then this guy... The big leg will, on the left, it'll face to the left, like that, and on the right, it'll face to the right. And you want the circles in the inner corners there, pointing at the other two big circles. And when you do it correctly, that'll open up the, other, the, uh, the grate on the other side of this one, so let's go back. And through the grate that we just opened... And all the way at the end here, we see a toy. One of two. And nothing else really here except there's a ladder going up, so let's see where that brings us. It brings us all the way back to the intro chapter. And you remember this, we turned on this big generator at the beginning of the game. We came from underneath the table. It's hard to even tell that there's a trapdoor under the table when you first come here. But while we're over here, there's something in Chapter 1 that we need to finish. So let's head into the Chapter 1 area. I'm talking about those gargoyles. We got the last gargoyle in Chapter 2 and we never came back to reap the rewards. So go up the Grand Staircase. And zoom in on the gargoyles. And here he is, that one guy that we got in Chapter 2 in the secret section. So click this guy. And this wall should open now. And 
and go in, and I believe we get an achievement when we come in here. Yep, Just Desserts has just unlocked. And, well, there's a lot to look at in here, a lot of neat things, lots of guns and stuff. But what's most important is that we have one of the Zodiac puzzles here on this table, which will get us our last three coins for Chapter 1. And this Zodiac is Leo. So put it together. And we get three coins. Okay, so we have all the coins in Chapter 1 now. Let's go back. We'll take the shortcut all the way back to chapter 3. Down. And here. And back to chapter 3. And back. And up. I think we are totally done down here now, so let's go up. Zoom in on this door real quick. Now that the server is online, we see what we need to do here. It's a four-digit code. We don't have the code yet, but just keep a note of that. Let's go up. Let's go back in here. And now this door... Looks like a five-digit code, doesn't it? But guess what? That's a trick. That's a red herring, because we don't need any code for this door. Instead, we're gonna blast this door open. That's right. And we're gonna do that right now, since... The server's online, and we should be able to use this computer right here. Now, you're going to want to read all these notes here because that counts toward your note count. So, just read each one. The bottom one is just corrupted. You can't read it. Now, go to the right. Oh, I'm sorry. No, go down from phase three and hit enter to connect the oscilloscope control. And now we can play with this oscilloscope control thing. You see the bottom dial is the amplitude and it basically increases and decreases the y-axis and the frequency sort of increases and decreases, uh, stretches out or condenses uh, the x-axis, basically. And to figure out what we need to do with that, we have to look on this whiteboard here. And we go in order from one, two, and three. They're, they're numbered in order. So number one is first, and you see, basically, I like to set the y-axis first because it's a lot easier than the x-axis because the thing is moving horizontally really quickly. So you can't really ever get a good look at the x-axis, but the y-axis you can, and it looks like if our origin is zero, 0, here on the Cartesian plane, it goes 1, 2. It look, it's actually 2 and a half, it looks like, is the peak. 2 and a half. Let's say 1, 2 and a half. Yeah, 2 and a half is the Y. And the X-axis, it's pretty thin. I mean, it's pretty condensed. Let's try it. And you see the, the yellow wires are all going here to this guy, this guy, behind this, and then the ball itself. So I think the first one you're going to want to pay attention to this guy on the left. 
All right, amplitude, let's do two and a half. So that's one t all the way down there, I guess. I don't know, like somewhere like that. And pay attention to these little dot increments. You can uh, play around with uh, when you get close to calibrating it. Um, just move one increment at a time. What will happen is this will start to spark and... On one dial, when you get the biggest spark, just stop on that dial and use the other dial slowly until you get it sparking a lot, and then it'll kind of explode. Alright, so we set the amplitude first, and we that looks like two and a half to me. Now let's condense the frequency. Oh, that condensing is the other way. Let's go kind of slow here, see if we start to get a spark. Yep. See, these, these last two notches look like uh, the only two that are sparking, and I think this second-to-last one is sparking the most, so I'm going to leave that there. Now let's play around with the amplitude a little bit. Does it need to go a little higher? Yeah, that's more like two and a half, so just leave it there, and that'll kind of explode, and then this blue ball will light up a tiny bit, and that's when you know you've completed the first one. Let's take a look at number two. Number two, the amplitude looks like it's an even two now. And there's like uh, the, the frequency will be very low. It'll be in the other direction. Let's give it a try. Let's go down to an even two. That looks pretty close to an even two to me. Let's decrease the frequency quite a bit. We're starting to get a spark here. But let's decrease it more. Oh, that looks correct. Boom. So memorize these two positions here. And you see our blue ball is lit up even more now. And we got one more to go. This time the amplitude is an even one. And the uh, the frequency is going to be kind of in the um, kind of average. The amplitude of even one. That looks like an even one to me. And that this kind of lit up a bit too. I think we only got to move this a little tiny bit. Probably up. Maybe up a little more. Yeah, let's leave it there, see if that's the right one. Mm, I guess not, but it, we're really close. Oh, there we go. That's gotta be it, right? Yeah. Let's see, we didn't need any code, we just blew the door right open. And also, we completed, we actually created one of those blue balls that we've been getting. <laughs> Alright, so, let's go up. And we are in a nice little planetarium area here. And the first thing I'm going to do is if you look behind you and down, you see that there's like this little cot thing and a pillow that you can lay down on. And you get an achievement for laying down here and staring up at the sky for five minutes. After five minutes, you will get an achievement. So I will see you after five minutes when it unlocks for me. Hey guys, I'm back. So I just got the achievement for sitting here for five minutes. It's called Celestial Mechanics. So we can get up now. Um, right behind the cot, you see this, uh, break in the wood here. Break in the, uh, kind of looks like stadium seating, <laughs> like bleachers almost. Anyway, zoom in on it and click and drag it up. And there's a toy. 
our second toy, and we get the achievement Dries Way Eins. Hope I pronounced that correctly. I don't know what it means, but you get that when you collect all the toys in the game, which we just did. And here's a note. Alright, zoom out. And on the table here, there are two very important posters that you're going to need to learn. The one on the right teaches you about um, our solar system and the outer planets. Um, learn the names. And you see in the background of each planet there's a symbol. Uh, remember when we were in the basement, we had to deal with three of um, our planetary symbols of our solar system. Well, here's uh, the four for uh, the outer planets in our solar system. You see the four symbols in the background here. It's kind of hard to see. Um, one, two, three, four. So keep those in mind. And the poster on the left shows you the same thing with the inner planets of our solar system. It's funny that they don't include Pluto because I thought that uh, the guy who built this area did it in the 90s. But I don't know. Anyway, the inner planets. There you go. Maybe, maybe he was here after the 90s. I'm, I don't really remember. You see Venus over here. Uh, zoom in on that. And right here, right to the right and underneath the little end table there is an item. So click and get that. We will need that for later. So zoom back out. And here we have a very important journal. The journal discusses the three stages of the extraterrestrials leaving their world in search of knowledge and finding our planet Earth. They did it in three distinct stages. They talk about it in this last paragraph here. Um, if you look at the main device in the middle you see these three lights that are not lit up yet. Basically, we have to recreate the three stages of their expedition. And as we do, the three lights will light up. And when all three lights are lit up, this gate will open and will give us access to the stairs. So if you look over here, let me explain these. This guy on the left represents our solar system uh, here's our Sun everything around the Sun etc uh, this symbol in the middle represents the solar system of the extraterrestrials and keep in mind that there's a third one over here that we need a key to unlock but we'll do that later now this uh, red slider on the machine you can only set it to the left or to the right um, the left has a long line and the right has a short line and when you play around a bit you will realize that the short line on the right represents our inner solar system so mercury venus earth mars and the sun and the long line representing a long distance away from our inner solar system represents both our outer solar system, the gas giant planets, and also obviously the, um, the alien solar system because it's very, very far away. So let's read in the journal about the, um, the three stages of the expedition. So the first clue is in this second paragraph here. 
Um, he talks about they came from a star uh, very far away. Uh, which orbits um, a hot Jupiter, and that their planet that they came from is not unlike our own Earth. So, that's the first stage of the expedition. So, we have the solar system set to theirs already. Now we have to go around the room to these eight buttons that you can turn on and off that represent our eight planets in our solar system and we need to have on only earth and jupiter so here's earth right here and i think directly behind it yep that's jupiter so we want to leave those two on but we want to turn the rest of them off so let's just go around the room and do that that's uh, saturn that we just turned off Mars, off, Neptune, off, Jupiter on, Mercury, off, uh, Uranus, off, Venus, off, and that should do it, and we have the slider set in the correct position, which is far away. Uh, from our inner solar system. So, once that's all in place, once everything's in place, just push activate. And you will get a visual representation of their planet Earth in their solar system, and the first light turns on, meaning that we got the, the first stage correct. The first stage of the expedition correct. Now let's look for other clues. Yep, so he talks about how they go, they have to pass through the gas giants of our solar system before they make it to our tiny blue marble situated in our um, inner solar system, obviously. So. If we start with our outer solar system, let's switch this to our solar system, our sun. And then you want to change all of these around the room to just have the outer planets highlighted. So Earth, we can turn off. Saturn, turn on. Mars, keep off. Neptune, turn on. Jupiter, keep on. Mercury, keep off. Uranus, turn on. And Venus, keep off. And that should do it. We still have the slider set to far enough away outside of our inner solar system. So click activate. And there we go. You can see... Our uh, outer planets here, the gas giants, and the second light turned on. Now all we have to do is set the machine up to represent our the planets in our inner solar system, including our own Earth. So we already have this set for our solar system. And all we have to do with these on the outside is just to invert them. Just click on each one going around the room. And I'll start with Earth. So just click each one. Just change the state of each one. And that should do it. Okay, that should do it. And we just have to change the slider to represent our inner solar system. And there we go. All three lights are on. And then it, the game will show you kind of a movie of all three stages of the Aliens Expedition. 
to our planet. Alright, we did it. And they all go up there, ahead of us. Alright, there's a lot to do in this room. Let's see, over here we see a slider. Zoom in on that, and move it. And you'll get some coins. Zoom in on the cup holder where the computer is and grab a key. And the image on the key should look very familiar to you from two seconds ago. <laughs> That's uh, our sun, our solar system on there. Near the stairs, uh, zoom in on this um, shelf here on the bottom and this is the third and final Micromagus chapter in the game and you'll get the achievement well read Traveler's Tale when you pick that up because we found all the Micromagus books down here is a very important journal you're gonna want to write down this code for the basement levers and the num the Roman numeral number six next to it. You're going to want to jot that down. Over here on this table are a couple clues. Um, this one shows a constellation of a guy reaching for a star, which you've probably seen on the projector as one of the constellations and the Roman numeral number three so jot that down and click on the sheet of paper next to it and we get a clue uh, the top half of the clue represents what you have to set the oscilloscope to we've seen images like this before on that whiteboard in that room and the bottom half of the clue represents those points on the star chart, except for the one at 12 o'clock, which is excluded. So it's like an X and then the one that goes down to 6 o'clock. So we'll put those clues together when, uh, when we get there. On the far wall here is a button, click on it, and it'll open the dome so that we can use the telescope. And they fly out, except for this guy, and this guy. It's kind of, kind of feels strange being watched at all times by these uh, extraterrestrials, I gotta say. So let's look at this wheel. We've seen three of these around this area before. This is the fourth one, and this one has a lot more going on. We see a bunch of numbers here, and as we turn the wheel, the numbers change. These numbers look like they're in a triangle-type format. We have one on the left, one up, one to the right here. Um, on the outside, we see a bunch of symbols. Some are zodiac symbols, some are not. But they're all familiar symbols. Um, and, and then there's these three black windows down here. 
And basically, these three black windows down here represent if those other three wheels that we've seen throughout this chapter are calibrated or not. When they are calibrated, you'll see an image of a wheel in each one of these. But since we don't see an image of any wheel in any of these, um, it means that none of these numbers are calibrated. So every time we get a group of coordinates like this, those numbers are not correct. So there's really nothing we can do with the telescope coordinates um, until we calibrate those other three wheels. But let me show you um, how we set the telescope anyway. If you zoom in on the computer and you click around uh, left and right to see which numbers you can change, uh, you see that you can only change these three numbers. The degrees, the minutes, and the, I don't know, feet? Not really sure what that dash means. I mean, I don't know. But look at the format of these three numbers. They're also kind of in a triangular format. The one I have highlighted now is on the left bottom. Then there's the middle one is up high. And the one on the right is down below across from the left. That is the same orientation as the numbers are on this wheel. And so that's how you know that the number, if this was the correct number 23, for example, it would be on the, on the left. And you can also figure that out just by messing around a little bit. It, it, it isn't too hard to figure that out. Uh, the degree digit only goes up to 29, I believe. Yeah, 29 and a minimum of 15, whereas the other ones go from, I believe, um, 0 to 60. Yeah, so that'll help you um, figure it out as well. Anyway, once you have the coordinates set, you just hit the enter button and the telescope will move. Of course, this is not the right solution yet or anything. I'm just showing you how this works. And then once you have the telescope set, you click on the scope, or the, I mean the eyepiece. And you'll see... Wait, if you have this set correctly, you'll see some very clear big stars. And... What you're trying to figure out is you're trying to set these lights here on this 4x4 four four grid, and those big stars, uh, when you see them through the telescope, you have to imagine that they're on the 4x4 four four grid, and you would set them in the right positions. And then you would click on whichever symbol you're trying to figure out the coordinates for. these symbols, whichever one you're trying to figure out the coordinates for. And the correct position for that is on top. So if you're trying to figure out the coordinates for, let's say, Aquarius over here, you'd set it to the top. And there is a way to figure that out, which I'll show you a little later when we get to those other three wheels. And then this one is an optional one. It has a picture of, like, a star... And what that will do is open this box. So keep that in mind. But for now, let's leave here. While we're down here, let's use the key that we just got. It obviously goes in here. And we unlock one with a single dot. And we don't know what that's for just yet, but keep that in mind. For later we will find a clue that shows that single dot let's go down let's go back and use our other item I'm sure you've probably noticed this 
it rotates, but you couldn't really do anything else until you found the other half. So this one, not only does it rotate, but you can drag it down into the other one. And the puzzle is to rotate both of these so that when you drag the top one down into the bottom one, the teeth fit into each other. And the only uh, two um, configurations that fit together perfectly like that, we already have this one set. You want to do the teeth that are uh, small, middle, high. And then you see this one has a big, middle, small. It's the opposite. So that will fit right into that other one perfectly. And we open up a hidden passage here for our efforts. And we finally have another radio that we can turn off. Let's do that first. All right, back out, and let's see. Down here, hidden behind these two boxes, is a Zodiac puzzle. This one is um, Aquarius, and it can be kind of difficult. Just keep in mind that the front of the box is here, the back of the box is here, so you're kind of looking at it this way in front, like diagonal. Uh, diagonal, bottom left to top right, okay? And once you realize that, then it's pretty easy to fit together. The, uh, the two long diagonal lines go on the left, the left bottom of the image, and just mirror the top and bottom. And we get two coins. We see a couple posters up here, three of them actually. This one is the Dancing Rings. This one is the Sun. And this one is the Spanish Dancer. And you see it says NGC 1566. And you'll remember from the very first room in this chapter that there is a door with a keypad where we need a four-digit code. And here it is, the only four-digit code that we can find is 1566. So that is the answer, and you're going to want to keep that in mind. <clears throat> Here's a clue down here. This clue is for the planetarium that we were just in. I'll explain that when we get back up there. And if you look behind you back the way we came and look up at this picture in the top of the picture there's a clue and this clue is about the statues that we saw in the hallway where they each had a birth date a death date and they each had this dial and uh, Clementine is saying that um, she figured out that the dials have to be set to the last digit of their date of birth for each statue, but when she does that, she still can't solve the puzzle, so it must have to be done in a certain order. And she has written for you um, the dial notations, so the top right button is one and then it goes clockwise two three four five and six so it goes one through six on each statue so now we can solve that puzzle once we get back out there i don't think there's anything in here except nothing <laughs> i thought an alien might come out of there but i misremembered Uh, that might be it in here, actually. So, let's leave. And... Let's see, what... We'll go back over here. We'll do the, uh, statue puzzle first. Okay, so, here's the statue room. See, they each have a date of birth, a date of death... 
Here's the dial one through six. And this dial is the activation dial to uh, input the code. And when it goes back like that and nothing happens, that means it's wrong. And once you do that, it resets the dials back to the number six position for all of them. Because the order that you set these in is important for each statue. You have to set them in the right order. But what is the order? Well, if you look at the, um, the date that each of these statues was born and died... This guy was born and died in the 1800s, late 1200s, early 1300s, 1900s, and 1100s. You see that they were each born and died in completely different eras. This guy lived and died way before anybody else. Then she was second. He was third. And he was fourth. They don't even come close to each other. So the order that you set these in is pretty obvious. It's the, the order of um, oldest to youngest, basically. So. He's the oldest guy. Died the earliest. So he'll be first, and the last digit of his date of birth is number one. So set his dial first to the number one, which is this position. And she was second to uh, be born and die, so the last digit of her date of birth is four. So set her dial one, two, three, four. And then he was next. And um, his last digit of his date of birth is 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And finally he was born and died last. And the last digit of his date of birth is 2. So set his dial to 2. 1, 2. And then only after you have all four of them set, click on the final dial. And when you've done it right, the glass case opens and we get this. Now, this is a picture of a harp and we actually saw this picture on the statue that I pointed out um, back in the first room that we started this chapter in downstairs with uh, the statue holding our yellow ball had this symbol on, on the statue. And if we flip this around, we see the name Hermes. And you remember that statue had uh, a letter combination that we didn't know at the time at the very beginning of the videos. And now we know that it's Hermes, so we can solve that. Let's go to the planetarium and solve that optional puzzle. Let's bring up that clue. This one. So this clue has um, two steps to it. The top half of the paper is the first step. The bottom half of the paper is the second step as you can see by the arrow being drawn from top to bottom. So in the first step, we see our solar system, our sun in the middle, and we see all eight planets next to the sun. Um, and that means that first we wanna have our solar system selected and we wanna have all eight planets turned on because all eight planets are on their rings going around the sun and then after we have that set on the planetarium we want to set the solar system setting to just the dot just the little dot that we just unlocked with the key not too long ago and as you can see there are no planets surrounding it so we 
we then want to turn all the planets to the off position. So let's do it. Our solar system is selected. And since it's our entire solar system, we have to switch to the, the long line. And now we want to turn all the planets on. Okay, they're all on, so let's hit activate. Okay, now you see an image of our entire solar system with our little tiny sun in the middle, and wouldn't you know it, that looks exactly like the yellow balls that we collect, don't we? So now we have to bring that yellow ball from there down to here, onto this pedestal, and... The way that you do that is you click on the image that obviously represents the sun. And you want to turn all the planets off. And once all the planets are off, before you hit activate, since we're only dealing with our sun, and since our sun is obviously at the dead center of our solar system, we have to move the slider to the little line that represents our inner solar system. Then hit activate. And now we have a picture of just our sun, which is the yellow ball. And now we have access to one of the three yellow balls that we always get. And there you go, there's the first one. Let's go solve the Hermes puzzle now. Down here. Yeah, see, this is, uh... This is Hermes, the guy who's holding our yellow ball. Oh. After you after you put Hermes in here, uh, you'll see this panel opens up and it shows an indentation of this bow. My bad. So you can't see the bow yet, but it becomes obvious that that goes in there. You'll see. Hermes... Hermes. Uh, maybe not. Maybe I'm misremembering. Hmm. Okay. Well, anyway, it obviously goes in here. And he gives us our second yellow ball. There we go. Now down here we have that door, which we didn't know the code to before, but now we do. It's 1566. We just found that out a couple minutes ago. And we can go in there. Okay, now our main goal in here is to get all four of these purple gems or diamonds and put them here. If you look at this center console, there are four black wires that connect to it and we need to activate all four. So... Let's just do it from left to right. If we follow 
the leftmost one. Um, to here, it connects into this white box. And there's a, a square white button, but we click on it and nothing happens yet. Uh, so our goal for this is we need to find four of these same buttons around the room that are hidden and hit all four and four lights will light up here and when all four lights are lit up then we hit this final one and we will have solved one of these okay so let's see there's one up here There is one here, next to this car, or spaceship diagram, whatever that is. That's two. There's one here, next to the shield. And there's one on this wall, right to the left of this little lamp on the wall. So now we found the four, and we hit the main button, it turns green, and we get that powered up. Alright, where does the next black wire go? It goes into this panel. Take a look at the symbols here. On each one of these three. The, the leftmost one is pretty much all zodiac symbols. The one in the middle has some zodiac symbols, the sun symbol, comet, star, and it has the digits uh, one through five. And the rightmost one has digits 0 through 9. Now, when you search around this room, you will see a paper hidden on this bookshelf here. And there are a bunch of codes written on the paper. And you have to keep trying these codes until you find one that can actually fit into the three digits on that console. So if you take this first one, for example, uh, we have that image, which is... Um, that's Capricorn. Yep, so we know that the leftmost one, as we just determined, has mostly zodiac symbols. So it probably is on. So and, uh, the, the Capricorn probably is here. But actually it's not. So we can already eliminate that code. Um, the next one... I don't think Gemini is in the middle. No, it's not. It's only in the left one. And you just keep going down. This obviously can't happen. Uh, this one can't happen. This one's uh, 0 through 9 only on the right. So that can't happen. That can't happen. Um, this The left doesn't have numbers. That can't happen. Uh, this, is on this only has numbers on the right. That can't happen. Only numbers on the right. That can't happen. Uh, let's see if Scorpio is on the left, because if it is, then this is possible. But as it turns out, Scorpio is actually one of the ones that is not on the left. So I think there's only two Zodiacs missing from the left, and it's probably Capricorn and Scorpio. So those are the I think those are the only two missing from the left. Uh, this one can't happen. The sun symbol is not on the left. 
Um, I don't think Aquarius is in the middle. No, it's not. Oh, look! The two missing ones are in the middle. Uh, Capricorn and Scorpio are in the middle, so... Those are the two Zodiacs symbols in the middle, and then the other three symbols are just a comet, the sun, and a star, and one through five. So now that's pretty simple to remember, now that we came to that revelation. Um, Alright, so next one can't work because this the middle one doesn't go up to the number six. And the next one down, hooray, hurrah, this should be the right one. We have Libra, which should be one of the ones on the left. We have the sun symbol, which we know is in the middle, and the number four. So Libra, sun, the number four. That should do it. And it does. Now you'll notice this clue did not disappear from our inventory. That's because over here... We have to do it again to open this chest. But this one is much easier to figure out. Because this goes from 1 to 5. This goes from 1 to 5. And this goes from 1 to 5. And so... Here we have 553, five, and that's it. That's all we need. 553 five, is the answer. And we get our last two coins of the chapter. <laughs> all right. What about the next wire? It is wrapping around over here. It looks like it goes into this cabinet. And look, all these cabinets on the bottom here, these cabinet doors all have dark handles. This one has a, a light handle. It looks different. So you click on it and it actually opens. Now we can zoom in and there's a slider. So drag it down. And there we go. And the last wire, we follow it, it goes kind of in here, and then it goes up into here. And you see a picture of like a green, I don't know, spaceship or something, and three spots. So we need to find three of those and place them here. There's one up on the very top of this shelf. There is one in between these two boxes in the corner. And there's one behind these two picture frames and next to the trash can on this side of the room here. And just put them in. There we go. Now we've solved the main puzzle in here. Get our diamonds or gems, whatever. And simply put them in here. And we get our third and final yellow ball. There's a couple other things we could do in here. There's some red herring boxes that when you open them, there's nothing in there. This one has a note in it, though. I think this is another red herring one. Yep. But there is a clue on the shelf right above, right here. And you see, now we have the um, the telescope code or coordinate 
clue for the star, that optional one, all the way upstairs. So keep that in mind. And with that, I think we're done in this room. I think so. Yeah. Okay. All right, so with that, let us focus on calibrating the three wheels so that the main coordinate wheel is calibrated. Our first wheel is down in the basement. While we're down there, we can deposit our yellow balls right here. This constellation is Aquarius, by the way. There we go. Alright, so this wheel is locked, as they all are right now. And we have the code to unlock it. It's in a book. Right here. This code should look familiar to you. And it has the Roman numeral 6 next to it. So let's input the code. It is 3, 1, 3, 2, 2, 1, 3. And there you go, the wheel is unlocked, and we have the Roman numeral 6 to set as our answer, and which position do you set it to? You set it to the top. It's the most logical choice, and between the two locks and the symbol, it should form a familiar looking triangle to you by now. And I suppose we could test that out by looking at the main wheel. Kind of curious to do that, actually. Because I want to see if you can calibrate one part of it at a time. Okay, so... The bottom symbol lit up, so we did set that wheel correctly to Roman numeral 6. I want to see if that... Uh, oh, yes, it did. Um, so when this wheel is lit up, it fixes this number here, because I know that uh, for Aquarius, which is one of the ones we need, this middle number is correct at 3. But the other two numbers are not correct, because we didn't calibrate the other two wheels yet, so let's go and do that. Okay, so for the oscilloscope, we have a clue. Right here. The top half of this clue, we gotta set it to... Looks like y equals 2, and x is, that looks like 3, but as we know, the y coordinate is what's really important. So let's see, 2 should be right about there. Yeah, you want it just above the line. Um... And let's see, we kind of want a wide frequency. And as you can see, these lights just turned on, which means that something happened. A fun fact, uh, the developer, I believe, patched that in. It used to not light up at all and used to have to just look around for something happening. I'm definitely glad he added that. Well, we know that there's a wheel right out here and indeed now the wheel is unlocked 
but which number do we set it to? Well, on that same clue, on the bottom half of the clue, you see one of those star chart codes that we've used before. Looks like we have to use every star piece except for the top one and add them together. So let's see, we have 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. So 4 is the answer to the wheel. So set Roman numeral 4 up top. And that should calibrate one of our two things on the big wheel. Let's check real quick, make sure we did it right. And indeed, the left number is now calibrated to the correct number. Now we just need the right number to be calibrated. Okay, we have a constellation clue here. Right here. This guy who's reaching for the star. You should recognize this as one of the constellation choices on the projector. And then we have the Roman numeral 3. So let's set this to the guy reaching for the star. There we go. And line these up correctly. Uh, no, other way. There we go. That looks correct to me. Let's see if the wheel unlocked. We know that it's down the stairs. Yep, it is unlocked, and we know that we have to set it to Roman numeral 3 on top. All right, this wheel is now fully calibrated. And as it just so happens, it's already set to Aquarius on the top, which is one of the three that we need. It's the one on the left here. So we need to figure out the star pattern. So we have the number 18, three, and 41. So let's set that on the computer. 18, 3, 41, hit enter, uh, zoom in on the telescope. All right, so if you imagine this on a 4x4 four four grid, you'll have, this is the first column. No, the 4x4 four four grid, this is, it's these four stars that are important. So this one looks like it's in the fourth position on top. Position number one on the bottom. Position number two, and position four. Four, one, two, four. Let's see if that works. Four, one, two, four. Hit the Aquarius. And if it lights up, that means you did it correctly. And I always like to clear these after. 
Our next symbol is the comet. Comet. Okay, we have 27, 26, 13. Seven, twenty six, thirteen, enter. Okay, so column one should be here with this big star. It's at position number one. Column two, the star position three. Next column, position two. And fourth and final column, position four. One, three, two, four. One, three, two, four. Got it. Okay, crescent moon symbol we need now. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have sixteen forty seven fifty three. Sixteen. Forty seven fifty three. I think it's faster to go this way. Yep. All right, let's see what we got. We have, the first column is position three. The second column has two stars at position four and one. It looks like there's nothing in the third column. There's a space here. And the fourth column is position three and two. So, let's see. Three... Four and one, skip that column, three and two. Got it. Grab the triangle. And we have all the clues we need to solve this star, too. Right here. We see that the first digit, the one on the left, needs to be the left digit of Cancer. The middle digit needs to be the middle digit of Aries. And the rightmost digit needs to be the right digit of Virgo. So let's figure that out. So Cancer... We set it to Cancer. The left digit is 22... The middle digit of Aries is 7, and the rightmost digit of Virgo is 53. So let's set that, 22, 7, 53. 22, 7... And it's already on 53. So hit enter. Alright, looks like the first column is positions 4 and 3. 
The second column is position two, the third column is position three, and the last column is position four and one. So let's set that on the rightmost computer thingy. Uh, let's see, four, three, two, three, four, one, star. Very good. We have an interesting looking item here, and I think I definitely know where this goes. Let's go down and get that. Right here, where our other blue ball is locked, we have a familiar looking hexagon with a red outline. Just put it right in. That'll open it up and you can grab it. Oh. And is that everything in this chapter? Yes, it is. So we are all set to leave and head towards the final area now. Which is right here. The aliens are waiting for us to open the door. Put the triangle in. Alright, and we get the achievement, The Pursuit of Knowledge, for completing Chapter 3. So let's head on over. All right, so we are in the final area of the game. And the next video will be the last base video of this walkthrough, and it will involve completing this final area and getting all the rest of the achievements. But don't worry, there will be some bonus episodes afterwards, and I'm looking forward to it. So I will see you guys next time. Take care.